Hey everyone, welcome to another Avid tutorial. The topic today is transcoding media in DaVinci Resolve to use in Avid instead of transcoding it directly in Avid. And I actually have a tutorial already up on the channel that talks about this, but I did get some questions. There were some keyboard shortcuts and stuff I didn't mention and some things you could do a little faster than the way I showed. So this is just kind of an update refresh of that one. So if you already watched the original, that one will still work. This one's just gonna show you a couple ways to speed things up a little bit, do things a little more efficiently, but the process is the same. So in this case, I have some media and normally I just transcode it right in Avid to use and that's perfectly fine, but sometimes you wanna transcode it in Resolve. That might be your on set and have a laptop that has Resolve already on it and doesn't have Avid. And it might just be that you like the interface a little bit better. I actually think for transcoding, Resolve is pretty smooth and does a better job of letting you see where you are in the transcode and how far along it is and what files are going through and such like that. And the other thing is it allows you to put on a color grade during the transcode, which can be handy if you were working with something that looked flat, you know, it was shot in log mode or something like that. And you want to have something that looks a little nicer to work with in your creative edit. There's nothing that transcoding and resolve is going to do that ultimately makes your final thing look better because you're doing the same thing essentially as you would in Avid. In either case, you're going to end up having the chance to do a final color grade back on your original media. This is just an alternate workflow. So let's get right to it. I have some clips and what I'm going to do is instead of starting in Avid, I'm going to start in resolve and bring in the clips I want to use. And you can do sort of the usual import and stuff and bring them into the media pool. Uh, something that can be a little faster is if I just have my media here, I can grab whatever clips I want and I'm just gonna grab these here and I'm just gonna drag them in here into my media pool. And it'll ask if I wanna change the frame rate to match the project, in this case, yes, I do. And so all those clips pop up in here. This is some footage from a documentary I'm working on. Now, what I wanna do is just get them all into one timeline and there's actually a really quick built-in way to do this. I can select all, Command A, and then just right click now that they're all selected and this very top option you can see is create new timeline using selected clips so it's just going to take all these clips and put them together into one timeline and i can give it a name if i had a particular group of clips that these were and i want to be able to remember where it's coming from or something i could do that in this case i'm just going to say like sample clips normally if i'm doing this for a project i might bring in all the footage from one drive or all the footage from one media card or something together and i'll label the timeline with that so i know where they came from I also like to, in that case, organize things in bins. So instead of just having everything here in the root master directory, I could make a bin here and I could take all this stuff and put it into the bin. And then I could label this bin sample clips or whatever. And again, if I'm doing this by media card or something, that's a way to do that. Okay, so now I got this timeline that has everything on there. I can double click on it and bring it up. If I'm just ready to transcode straight from here, I'll go straight to the deliver tab. In this case, this is some footage that was shot in a raw mode there was not a LUT applied in camera. And so again, this isn't gonna make a difference to the final project because I'm not talking about doing a final color grade here. And if I wanna just edit with this footage as is in my creative edit, that's totally fine. I often do that, but some people prefer to look at something that looks a little nicer, a little closer to what they think the final image might do. So if I wanna do that, I'm gonna go into my color tab here and I'm gonna throw a color grade on this. I could do these all individually. Again, I'm just doing this down and dirty just for my creative edit. It's not a final color grade, so I don't wanna waste time doing that. So an easier thing to do is up here on the right top, instead of selecting clip, I'm just gonna drop this down and select timeline and say, I wanna do a color correction to the whole timeline. By default, unlike in the clip mode, there is no node already here. The default is not to do anything to the timeline. So I'm gonna have to create a node that's option S on Mac. So I'll hit that, it makes a node. And in this case, I know what camera this was shot on. And so I'm just gonna throw the sort of default LUT on for that. I could do whatever kind of color grade I wanted. I could throw any LUT on. If I had a particular LUT designed for this project, the way that we know we want the final footage to look, great, I could throw that on. In this case, I just want to kind of bring it back to sort of neutral what it was supposed to look like originally. So I'm gonna go in here and this was shot on the Blackmagic camera. And I'm just gonna go to the extended video look. And that's about what it looked like on set close enough. I don't need to do this. This doesn't have any impact on the final project. I'll show you how we bring this back in from Avid when your editing is done and you're ready to do your color grade in Resolve. But in this case, it just makes it a little easier for me if I'm going to be working with this footage in the edit and I want it to look a little nicer during that. Okay, so now I'm ready to transcode. I'm gonna flip over to my Deliver tab where I can output things. 
Transcoding in Resolve works perfectly fine. You can use it in Avid. Lots of people use this workflow professionally, so there's nothing wrong with it. I will just point out, you have to make sure to get the settings right here. When you're doing your transcodes directly in Avid, Avid is kind of managing all the behind the scenes for you and making sure that everything is staying linked to the original master files in a way that it understands and that you'll be able to recreate later. If you're doing this in Resolve, it's still totally possible to do that, but you have to make sure to get your settings right because you're transcoding the files here and then bringing them into Avid and then editing them in Avid and then wanting it to spit out a sequence from there that's going to relink to your original master files correctly. So you just need to make sure to get all your settings right. It's not hard, but you have to check the details. So first thing here is up here, I wanna make sure I'm not doing a single clip, but instead I'm doing individual clips because I don't want one giant video of my timeline. I want all these to be individual clips as they show up in Avid. Let me click over to the file tab here for a second. And this is the important thing is I want to use source name. So instead of me giving each of these a name, I want to just use the name of the original file and that's going to help Avid out and help resolve out in the back end, making sure everything reconnects back to each other. If you think you might have multiple clips with the same exact name, you can check this use unique file names and it'll allow you to you know, put something else on the end or whatever to make sure all the files have a different name. If you aren't gonna have files with exactly the same name, I just would leave this unchecked. I found sometimes it can create some headaches for you relinking things on the back end when you come back in for color grading later. So I got this set to source name. Go to my audio tab and I just want to make sure here that my bit depth is set to whatever Avid's using. In this case, my project is set to 24 bits, so I'm going to do that. And on channels up here, the easiest thing to go same as source and that way whatever audio was in the original clip will get transcoded. If you know that maybe you were only using the first track and there's 10 audio tracks recorded in whatever camera you're using and you don't want to generate all that other stuff, you could just say, you know, just grab me the first one. But I'm just going to go same as source and grab all my original audio and make sure I have it. And lastly, over here in the video, I have to select the correct format. And the important thing here is I'm going to select MXF OP Atom. You may remember that Avid puts an MXF wrapper around things, so you could probably guess it was going to be one of these two. The OP1A is basically a single file in an MXF wrapper, and Avid's not really going to know what to do with that as a transcode. I want to use the Atom one, and the way that I remember that is I'm ultimately going to want this in the way Avid wants it, which is video and audio all in separate files. So if I have one video track and two audio tracks, it's going to output that as three files, a video file and two audio files. And so I think of that as like breaking it down into its individual atoms. I have no idea if that's where the name comes from, but that's how I remember that this is what I want when I'm doing this to bring the files into Avid. So I'll click on that, and then I have to select my codec. Obviously, if we're bringing stuff into Avid as our transcodes, I want either DNxHD or DNxHR. This is for an offline creative edit. It doesn't need to be gigantic files and enormous resolution. I'm just going to go with the smallest files I can because that's perfectly good for my creative edit. So I'm going to go DNxHD, and in this case, I'm going to go with the 36 8 bit. This is 23976 frame rate footage. This is actually 6K footage, but I'm going to down convert it down to 1080p for my offline. And then remember when I relink back into color, it'll relink to the original master footage and it'll have all that 6K resolution. Okay, so now I've got all these settings set and you make sure I know where it's going. I like to do this and actually make a folder called transcoded media or something like that and put it in just so I can see that that's where all that stuff is going. That's not actually where it's gonna have to end up, but this way it's all in one place for now. So will go into that transcoded media. Open, okay, and I'm ready to go. I'll add this to the render queue. I'll hit render all, and it's gonna go through this. And this is one of the things I mentioned I like about Resolve is as it's going through, you can kind of see its progression through the timeline here, and you can see what clip it's actually doing and what frame it's on, and it'll give you an estimate of how long this takes. So this group of clips I'm doing, it thinks it's gonna take about five minutes. So I'm just gonna fast forward to the end here when this is all transcoded, and I'll meet you there. Okay, so I'm back, that's done transcoding, see completed here. And you might be actually wondering about the speed of transcodes. I will say I've not done any tests myself, but from what I've read online, Resolve tends to be your fastest way to transcode compared to just doing it directly in Avid. Um, and depending on the particular hardware you're on and the type of footage you're transcoding, in some cases it can be significantly faster. My understanding is particularly with the Apple Silicon chips, if you have the M1 or M2 or M2 Pro or any of those, they've sort of optimized for that and it's running significantly faster than transcoding within Avid. So if you have a ton of footage to transcode, and you're concerned about the speed of doing it, my understanding is Resolve can be significantly faster, but again, I haven't done tests on that myself. Okay, so we got our stuff transcoded, and let's take a look on the drive. Here's transcoded media, and you can see all those files, and for each of them, it has the video file and then two audio files, because this was footage that had two audio tracks on it. 
And so these are all transcoded and ready to go in Avid. Now, what you remember is with Avid, it really matters exactly where files are for it to find them. So just the fact that I've made these doesn't mean Avid is suddenly going to say, oh, wow, here's all this new media. I actually need to put them in the correct location, which if you don't remember is the Avid Media Files folder and then inside the MXF folder on that. On this particular drive, I don't actually have an Avid Media Files folder yet, so I'll go ahead and make one. And put an MXF folder inside that. And then I'm going to move my transcoded files into there. Now when I do that and go into Avid, it still doesn't automatically know they're there because one more thing that Avid is really particular about is not just the location of these files, but remember these have to be numbered folders. So if I just change this to a number instead of transcoded media, this will work. Something I would recommend that can be helpful to keep track of your files is to give this a number that has some meaning. So if you transcoded all the things on a particular card number, you wanna name it after that card, that's fine. If it was all the stuff on a particular drive and you can name it after that drive, that's fine. I like to do stuff based on date, so I can sort of organize by when I transcoded things and I know what cards were shot which days and stuff, so that's another way I can kind of connect back to what the original media was. I'm just going to put the date here as I'm recording this. This is August 23rd, 2023. And now I go back into Avid and you hopefully saw it did a quick scan. It did find the stuff. It knows there's media there now and that little window that came up and showed it did a scan. I'll see if I can freeze frame it here for a second so you can see it. There we go. So that means it works, it saw those files, it knows what they are, great. The other way I can tell is when I go in here now, you can see Avid has created these .pmr and .mdb files, which are its database files for keeping track of what's in there. So when Avid found these and scanned this folder, then it created all of those. Okay, I still don't have the footage actually in my project, and there's a couple ways I could do this. By far the most efficient way is just to import this database file, and I'll show you you can do that. but. I will show you one other way, which sometimes can be helpful if you don't want to bring in all the files and you just want to bring in certain ones. I can go to my media tool and select the drive and select the project. And you can see that it actually remembers what was the name of the resolve project that these were transcoded in. So this is my Avid project here. And it says, hey, there's some media here that was created in another project. This was my resolve project called this. And I'll hit OK. And it'll show me all these clips here. And I could just literally grab all these and drag them into my bin. And now they're in here. See, there's all the footage, and that works fine. This can get a little unwieldy if you have a ton of stuff on this drive. So maybe I've been transcoding a whole bunch of different cards, a whole bunch of different folders, and they're all gonna show up on here, and I did them all in the same project. You'll notice there's no way to specify, like, I just want the stuff in this particular folder. And there's ways I could find that, so I could look if I know when was this created, and so, okay, here's stuff that was just created now. I can do that. There's ways I can sort this and find this, but this can be unwieldy if you have a ton of stuff on there. This is not necessarily the easiest way to do it but it is always a way that works and again if I just want like a particular clip I can do this and find all the clips that are on that drive from that project and just drag in the ones I want or drag them to particular bins if I want to do things that way but let me show you another way so I'm going to just delete those out of here and instead of using the media tool I'm going to go to input and go to say I want to import some media and then instead of actually importing the media clips themselves I'm going to go into my media files folder and then into that particular folder I just transcoded and select this database file .mdb, hit open, and it's gonna import all the clips that it found that were in that folder. So again, this will bring in everything in the folder, but I don't have to go through the media tool and worry about, oh, is there stuff that was in a different folder that is also showing up here and I don't wanna bring it in twice or whatever. This way it's just gonna bring in the stuff in that particular MXF subfolder. Which again, so what I can do is like, let's say I have to transcode another batch of stuff. I don't have to put that all in the same folder. I can just put another folder inside the MXFs folder here. And you know, maybe this is stuff that I do tomorrow. And I put all those files in here. And now those will stay organized by when I transcoded them. So when I go into these and look for just that database file, it only have the stuff in that folder. So this is kind of a little easier way to keep track of things. And that gets your stuff into Avid. So that's the whole transcoding part. I will show you the back end of how to do your final color grading back in Resolve just to show you that that works. I have other videos that again, walk you through this process in more detail. It's really straightforward if you transcoded in Avid originally. If you've done this process we just did here where you transcoded and resolved, brought them into Avid, there's a couple of things you just need to check and make sure you're doing right. Again, you just have to pay a little more attention to some of the details than if you did it all in Avid. Okay, so now that we've got those all loaded, I'm just gonna make a quick sequence here. 
and throw a couple of clips into it. And we'll just pretend this is my sequence here. And I'm paranoid, so I'm gonna just set in and out points at the beginning and end. So I've got the timeline selected here because I wanna make sure I'm outputting this and not some other clip. And we go output, export to file. And just like I would pretty much any time I'm trying to export a sequence out of Avid, I'm going to export it into an AAF. So I have a preset for this. We'll check my options, make sure they're okay. Looks good. In this case, I'm going to not bring in my audio tracks because I just want the video. And I'm just gonna put this on that same drive. And you can see when I export an AAF, it does create a copy of my sequence as it does so. That's this temp sequence dot exported dot oh one. Okay, so now I can go back into Resolve. And if I was working in the same project, this would actually work a little smoother, but let's pretend that I may not have access to the same project or I forgot where it is, or maybe my media was scattered across several transcoding projects. And let's just pretend I'm starting from scratch so I can show you what the possible problems would be. So I'm gonna switch to a new project. Okay, so I wanna bring in that AAF. And what you would think you would do is exactly the same thing you would do with an AAF of media that you had transcoded within Avid. And I'm gonna show you it doesn't quite exactly work the way you might want it to. So I'm gonna right click here and say I wanna import a timeline, an AAF, and find that one that I just created right there. And I would always like to check the link to source camera files option because I don't want to use the transcoded stuff. I want to use the original full resolution media files that I had. Okay, and looks great. I got a timeline in here. I can scroll through, it's got all my footage in order, but you'll notice it already has that kind of color grade on it. And that's because when I did this, it actually brought into the project the files out of the Avid media files folder instead of the original source full resolution files. You can see that in fact, if I look at one of these files and right click on it and say I want to reveal in Finder, you can see where it is here, it's inside that Avid Media Files MXF at bin folder. So it's bringing that transcoded low res footage in instead of the original footage. So this isn't what I want. And this is the one thing where you have to do things a little bit differently. That process I just did, if I had transcoded all my media in Avid would work perfectly. But if I transcoded my media in Resolve, then brought it to Avid and then edited there, and then I'm trying to go back into Resolve to do my coloring, I need to be a little more careful here. So I'm gonna delete all this stuff and try this again. And here's the key thing. I need to start with my media already in the project before I bring in the timeline. And that's what's gonna make the difference here. So I'll make a bin, I can call this my media bin. Okay, and I am going to find all my original footage, the original full res footage I had, and bring it all in. I don't actually remember which clips I use, so I'll just bring in all of these. So now those are already in here, and then I can make another bin for you know timelines if I wanna be a little more organized. Okay, and then in here, now I'm going to import my AAF. Okay, and I will say I want a link to source camera files again, but I'm also going to uncheck this thing of import source clips into media pool. So what it's gonna do is it's going to ignore those clips in the Avid Media Files thing. It's not going to try to import them. Instead, it's going to bring in the timeline, but then try to link to the source camera files, which are already in the project, so it will find them. Okay, and you can see here's my sequence and it has the footage here, but crucially you can see it now doesn't have that color grade on it. It's just the original raw footage in my full 6K resolution. And if we want to see this, I could do something like find a media pool and you can see it's going to this clip. If I go reveal and finder was my original raw clip. So that's the way I do it and everything comes in fine. So again, not hard, but just that one extra step I need to make sure I'm doing right so that I'm linking back to the correct files. All in all, I think probably a worthwhile trade-off in many cases, if you can transcode faster in Resolve and you can throw your color grades on it. And I think it's a little easier in terms of even managing those folders inside the Avid Media Files instead of when you transcode in Avid, it's gonna by default just throw them into like the first possible number and you have to keep track of updating those and breaking things into different folders if you wanna keep them separated out. But that's the process. I hope that was useful. And if you have any questions on this, I do have other videos that walk through different parts of this process in more detail, but this was sort of the quick overview for if you already understand the idea of transcoding, what we're trying to do, and just wanna know how do I do that in Resolve and then get those files into and back out of Avid. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.